Hey, what's up, peeps? Welcome to another episode of Direct Edition, the channel is Fred Hall Direct Edition, and today we're going to be doing some uh, barbecue baby backs. Uh, along with my other videos, I always get asked, you know, how long does something take on the grill? You know, how do you prepare it? Well, we're going to do a step by step uh, video on how to barbecue some baby back ribs. Most of my meals don't take no more than um, 45 minutes, maybe an hour, but sometimes two hours. And I have uh, kids I have to cook for before I go to work. Single father. As I was saying, most of my meals are like 45 minutes um, to maybe two hours at the most for a big meal. Uh, but most of my meals are 45 minutes to an hour. Single father, uh, working schedule. Two young ones, two older ones, so I'm always busy, so I try to keep my meals uh, very fast, very good, um, but I know what I'm doing in the kitchen. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get into the big back grills. Let's prepare them, let's put them on the grill, and let's get them off. They should take no longer than maybe an hour to 45 minutes once your coals get uh, to the right temperature. Uh, once you put them on, the preparation, let's give it an extra 15 minutes. So at the most, your ribs should take, give yourself an hour and 30 minutes. Uh, just to be safe. So let's get into the video. The first thing I like to do when I'm cooking on the weekends is definitely start off with a shot. I love the drink in the kitchen. Bottoms up. You know, some Bacardi Gold. Uh, but, but another thing is I always try to keep my kitchen clean because you never know when you're going to start. So the first thing you want to do is you want to wind cold water over your baby backs. This is two slabs that I have. And this is what we're going to cook. And you, the reason why you want to wash them off is because you're going to get it prepared to actually, um, you're going to get it prepared to actually clean it even further with water. Uh, most people like to use vinegar. I sometimes will use vinegar mostly, or I use, um, today I'm going to be using lime or uh, fresh squeezed lemons on them to clean it. The reason why you want to clean your pork and your meat is because they have nitrates in it. Uh, pork does and, it, and the nitrates will actually trigger a headache. So you have to try to get those nitrates uh, under control that's in uh, any kind of processed meat or any kind of meat that's butchered. So let's do this. So basically the baby backs are in a bowl and I chopped up some lemons to go in it. And like I said, the reason why you want to do this process or you want to actually um, give your uh, ribs, any ribs, uh, pork, uh, spare, baby back, even beef ribs. The reason why you want to give them this bath in either lemon juice or vinegar and water is because of the nitrates. So what you do is you squeeze a lemon on there and you just add a little bit of water to it. So we chopped up what, uh, two, four lemons that I just so happened to have left over because I think I was cooking fish one day. So I already had them. Usually I don't have lemons in the house like that. That's not something I keep around. But yeah, it just give it that nice little, it takes off the excess grease and it takes off all the nasty stuff. And like I said, um, most of the times with your pork products, like, like uh, let's see, like pork shoulder or like, um, uh, what am I trying to say? <sighs> pork chops. Pork chops, you know, you have you have to clean them. You have to clean your meat, man. You can't just take them out the package, run uh, cold water on it, and then just throw it on the grill or, or cook it. If you're going to do that, at least run it in water and soak it in water for, I would give yourself at least five minutes. Like, go downstairs, start a batch of laundry, and then come back and uh, then take it out of water. And uh, make sure you switch it around as much as you can, especially poultry. You want to get all that fat, and all that grease and grime off of it. So you take the lemon juice, put it back in the sink. Always have to have a very clean kitchen. Run a little water. Okay, run a little water on it. Get it full up to where, you know, it, most of your meat is uh, submerged in the water. And then while you're doing that, you know, you go downstairs and you start your fire because you want your fire to get to a gray uh, coal like before you actually put the meat on you know you don't want to rush your coals the more your coals burn the better uh, your meat is not going to burn up on the grill so you guys ready all right let's go and start the fire but before we do that cheers 
So it's beautiful and it's in the evening. It's probably about like seven o'clock and we're gonna do some nighttime grilling um, because I know the sun is gonna go all the way down in a couple minutes. Uh, but yeah, let's go ahead and start the fire. And then we're gonna go up and start our side dishes for the meal. A side dish I decided today to kind of pay homage to back home to Miami and do like a seafood kind of like pasta, which is uh, you put the ingredients in and then you let it settle for about uh, about six hours or even overnight and you allow it to chill. And um, it's, not, it's a nice cold dish. It's called seafood pasta, which is pretty cool. But you know, this is nice Georgia weather. It's about 80 outside. I chose to grill later on in the evening because it's pretty hot out here. You know, Georgia can get up to 80, 90 degrees. But let's go ahead and start our charcoal and then let's go upstairs and let's start our side dishes uh, for our traditional uh, baby back ribs. You guys ready? All right, let's do this. So we got the flame started and that's a good way to start out your flame and when you start your flame you can if you're uh, pretty good at uh, grilling you can go inside and just leave it and then by the time you come back in about another 20 minutes it'll be like gray so uh yeah we got the grill started so let's go inside and let's start our side dishes because once we put our meat on the grill we really want to be available and we don't want to take our eyes off of it. So let's go and start our side dishes and finish them. And then we're going to come back in like 20, 30 minutes to uh, put the meat on the grill. All right, let's do this. So our side dish is definitely going to be a pasta noodle. Okay. And if you're anything like me, uh, I'm like a black Italian when I cook pasta. I cook way too much. You know what I'm saying? I, I, I always have pasta left over for two, three days, but that's the beginning of your seafood pasta. So while we're waiting on the pasta to boil, uh, see, cause they just got in. While we wait on those to boil and get tender, we're gonna start on uh, seasoning our uh, baby backs. So let's go ahead and season our baby backs. So this is our baby backs. The first thing I, I try not to season it with too much garlic powder, but the first thing we're gonna do is put garlic powder on there. And the reason why I tell you don't cook, don't put too much garlic powder is because garlic powder, when it meets the fire, it has a tendency to burn. So you don't want to look, you don't want your ribs to look as if they're uh, burnt and they're not. But if you put too much garlic powder, they will, it will give you that uh, hallucination as if your ribs are burnt, burnt and they're not. So just a little bit of garlic powder. And I start with this side, allow my sexy fingers, because this side is the side that really your teeth scrubs against. This is the bottom of the rib. Your teeth scrubs against the bottom of this rib and it gets the seasoning really, really good. The top has seasoning, but your, but your bottom really, really captures the seasoning because it's just a thin layer of skin. Now, what I usually do with the ribs is I usually soak them in uh, soy sauce, cut with a little bit of water, and marinate them overnight. But we're just going to do this right quick. I didn't have time to prepare them overnight. I just wanted to do a, a video of uh, just showing you straight up how I cook my baby backs straight up. But if you want a tremendous taste in baby back or tremendous taste in grilled meat, you always uh, marinate it overnight. But we're going straight up. So let's do it straight up. It's still good straight up. So let's do it. So along with the garlic powder, we put a little bit of pepper. And we're gonna flip, once we finish seasoning this side, we're gonna flip it over and do the same thing. So that's a little bit of pepper. Now pork, it already is a salty meat. So you just need a little bit of salt. You don't need to over salt your pork because like I said, pig is naturally salty. So let's put on the salt. So we put on the salt and people are always ask me, why, are my, why is my barbecue so good? The first hidden ingredient I have is, like I told you, I marinate it overnight. The next biggest thing I have is, and they're going to have to sponsor my channel, is Goya. This this right here, these packets, they come like this. If you can find them, get them. Uh, but I definitely would put uh, two packs on the bottom and two packs on the top. And they are very good as far as just bringing out the best in any meat. So most of the times when I cook... Uh, meat, I run through these packs. They're only like a dollar twenty-five. I usually buy the bigger pack for two dollars. But yeah, this is my secret ingredient because I'm from Miami, and Miami has a heavy Spanish influence. So let's go ahead and season these ribs up, and then let's get up, let's get them on the grill. So this is how your baby back should look, and then you wait till the coals turn gray and you throw them on the grill. 
All right, let's see about the seafood pasta. So our pasta noodles are nice and tender. You see the steam coming off of it. I think I'm going to split them in half and do half uh, shrimp pasta and half macaroni. Because uh, the shrimp pasta is really going to uh, have to sit for at least uh, about four hours. So, all right, let's go ahead and do this. Let's go ahead and uh, do the shrimp pasta. So to get a quick cool off, I usually throw a couple ice cubes in there. And uh, let's go ahead and add some of the ingredients. Well, the first ingredient we're going to add is Italian dressing. So after I add the um, Italian dressing, I put a little bit of uh, crab meat or imitation crab meat and I put a little bit of cocktail shrimp. Now usually I'll buy the jumbo shrimp and uh, take the tails off, but I didn't feel like it today. So along with this, I'm going to throw in something from my garden. I have a garden in the back. I got some fresh cilantro, so I'm going to cut up the cilantro and throw it in it. Uh, some people from Miami love to put uh, onions, bell peppers, and tomatoes in there. And that's pretty cool, but I just felt like doing a simple seafood pasta. So this would be a seafood pasta without the onions, uh, bell peppers, and uh, tomatoes. But yeah, let's go ahead and throw it, uh, cut up the cilantro, throw it in there. Let's mix it up. Uh, the last ingredient we're going to put in at the cilantro is cheese. So you did Italian dressing. You did um, imitation crab meat. You did, um, what do you call it? The, the cocktail shrimp, which I hate. I like the jumbo shrimp. We're going to do a fresh oregano. I meant a fresh uh, cilantro that I have from my garden. And then we're going to throw chunks of cheese in it, uh, mix it together, salt and pepper, and throw it in the refrigerator for four hours. So let's do this. I almost forgot to tell you another important ingredient is in this is grated Parmesan cheese. So let's go ahead and mix it up and watch how all the flavors marry, but they really don't really get into the noodles and soak up into the noodles until you actually put it in the refrigerator for either four hours or overnight. So let's do this. And this is how it looks mixed up. Like I said, I'm gonna throw it in the refrigerator for four hours and just let it marry, all the flavors marry. And uh, yeah, it's really good. It's a cold dish that goes with any nice summer meal. See the chunks of cheese in there? Oh yeah. Let's do this. So it's something beautiful about cooking during the nighttime in the summer. First of all, it's still hot, you know? And uh, you know, you just get that old 4th of July feeling. I know you guys can't see too much because we're dark out here. But there's the sky and there's the food, you know. So it's very beautiful to cook during the summertime at night. And uh, usually I don't keep the top of the grill open because uh, the charcoals have a tendency to flame. But I actually waited about 30, 45 minutes until I actually put the meat on. So that gives me um, time to not let it uh, flare up. The longer you wait on your charcoals, the more it won't flare up. And I definitely don't do name brands, but I definitely suggest that you use Kingsford. Uh, Kingsford charcoal is the best charcoal that's out there. And uh, yeah, so let's uh, see how long these baby backs are gonna get done. And the beautiful thing about baby backs is they actually come from a younger pig. So the meat tends to have a more of a non-potency uh, to it. It's uh, one of the freshest meats that you can use. The younger the animal, the more uh, clear, clear the meat is or the more pure the meat is. So uh, yeah, just beautiful. All right, let's do this. And this is how your ribs look fresh off the grill at night. Pretty cool. Now all I gotta do is just, you know, chop them up and serve them. Uh, you know, I braise them with a little bit of barbecue sauce and uh, yeah. So that's uh, doing your ribs and what? Baby back ribs in 45 minutes with a side of seafood pasta. All right, take it away, Big Fred. So seafood pasta is gonna go for tomorrow. I'm definitely gonna re on the ribs with the seafood pasta, but I did a nice little pesto on the side. And uh, yeah, okay, now you can take it away, Big Fred. My God, this looks good. Oh yeah. Yeah, so that was pretty cool. 
you know, just wanted to show you how I do my uh, barbecue baby back ribs. And uh, yeah, I'll see you next time. Be safe out there. Remember, words of wisdom focus on the ones that show you love, not the ones that don't show you love. Hey, we're just going to keep it rolling without them. Be safe out there, and I'll catch you later. Peace.